Jake, and the knuckles of her hands had gone white. She spun around, but before she did, Junpei noticed tears welling up in her eyes. I'm gonna go look for him. The words were barely out of her mouth when she began to run. Hey! Old dog, Clover, wait! Junpei cried out to her, but he was too slow. She kept going, and before anyone else could react, she was gone. Damn it. What should we do now? Well, the red is working now. No, we're not leaving two people behind. We should go look for them. Aw oh, man, this ain't good. Oh yeah, so what's next on Eddie? We just wasted a bunch of time looking for some piece of electronic junk. Now let's waste some more by looking for a couple of idiots. They remain here if you, if you feel you must, but there's no time. We've only five hours left. Junpei and the others nodded to one another and took off at a run. Oh. In front of the stairs that led to B-Deck, they decided to split up. They quickly assigned search areas and went their separate ways. Soon only two of them were left. I'm glad they didn't give me a choice in, do you want to leave or do you want to look for them? Because I would have chosen to look for them anyway. I don't, I don't like the idea of leaving them behind. They could come in handy later. And, uh, you know, don't want them to die or anything. <laughs> Those two were Jumpy and June, who had been a few steps behind the others. Alright, we should go too. Yes, let's go. But where should we start? Let's see. Ooh, casino B deck, first class cabin B deck, the hallway with all the rooms, C deck, back to the large hospital. Well, they're not in the hospital room. Uh, we were searching the hallway with all the rooms, but he could have got lost. First class cabin B deck. I'll go there, because the hallway with all the rooms, because Clover might be there. We should go check out the hallway with all the rooms. Okay, let's go jumpy. They turned and ran down the hallway to their left. Ahead of them, farther down the hall where they spotted Ace. Hey! Snake! Where are you? Answer me if you're there. Junpei paused. What did he want to do? Run to Ace? Let Ace handle it. Well, I'm guessing he's not there, so there's no point bothering him. Why don't we just leave this area to Ace? We can go somewhere else. I don't mind. But where? Well, let's see. Uh, let's try the first class cabin. I, mean, I don't know why you would go into a casino. Let's go check out the first class cabin. Okay, I'm coming with you. They turned and headed toward B deck. Outside of the first class cabin, they found Clover. She was standing in front of the wall. She was staring at a meaningless point on the wall, her eyes blank. What should Junpei do? I'll talk to her. You alright? He did his best to sound friendly, but Clover didn't respond. Look, I know you're really worried, but, um... He could think of no words to say that didn't sound hollow and fake. Junpei hesitated. Clover was so consumed by worry and fear that Junpei feared it would crush her. Her actions didn't surprise him. She had suddenly lost her brother, who she seemed to have been very close to. Lone. Her voice was thin and barely audible. Lone. Lone. <laughs> I said, leave me alone. He didn't, he said alone. Suddenly she was screaming. You're so annoying, just go away and leave me alone. Oh, calm down. Just looking at you guys is pissing me off. Go away, okay? Just go somewhere else. Stop bothering me. Junpei was taken aback. Such anger and hate. Jun's eyes had gone wide with surprise as well. Why are you still here? Didn't you hear me? Fine, forget it. If you aren't going to leave, then I'll just... Alright. Let's go, June. Y yeah. Jeez. They turned and left Clover. As they did, Junpei glanced back over his shoulder to see Clover wiping tears from her face. Clover had driven home with the misery of the situation, but Junpei told himself that getting depressed would get him nowhere but depressed. For Clover's sake, they had to find Snake, and fast. He did his best to push away the misery and depression, and forced a smile. So where do you think we should go next? Uh, casino, I guess? How about the casino? Not sure why I'd be there, but let's go take a look. They turned and headed off down the hallway to their right at a jog. Before they knew it, they were there. So was Lotus. She was leaning against the wall, examining her nails. Hey, what do you think you're doing? She glanced up at him, unimpressed. 
Isn't it obvious? I'm looking for a snake. I'm just not seeing it. Really? Maybe need to look harder. Junpei didn't think that that was the problem. Oh, by the way, I've got a proposal for you two. Care to hear it? Alright. What is it? Well, I don't like to beat around the bush, so I'll get right to it. Why don't we team up? Team up? Yeah. What, you need me to explain it to you? I'm saying, why don't we go through a numbered door? Even if we want to do that's impossible. Why? Junpei's bracelet's number 5, minus 6, and yours is 8. Our digital root would be 1. 5, 6, and 9 is 1. 1 and 9 equals 10. 1 and 0 equals 1. But there's no number 1 door in the large hospital room. The only doors there are 3, 7, and 8. Then we add another person. Huh? Who? What, isn't that easy? 7. She was right. If they added 7, 5, 6, 8, 7 equals 26, 2 and 6 equals 8. Then the four of them could go through number 8 door. But... Whoa, hold on a sec. What about the other four? Why don't you add them up? That was simple enough. 1, 2, 3 and 4 equals 10. 1 and 0 equals 1. The digital root for those four will be 1. That's right. And you know the number one door isn't it, in the big hospital room, right? Of course, I know that. No, are you saying you'd leave them behind? Of course not, what kind of woman do you think I am? Once we got off the ship, we could come back and rescue them, couldn't we? Then we wouldn't really be leaving them behind. Oh, I don't like this bitch. She's... As soon as she's off the ship, she wouldn't care what happened to them. She just seems too carefree and lazy and... Very selfish. No, no, I'm not teaming up with her. No. Don't try to lie to us. I don't think you do anything of the sort. Really? Why do you think that? You remember, don't you? We have less than five hours left. Even if we manage to escape, there's no way we could come back to rescue them in less than five hours. Well, you never know until you try. No, no. You're not thinking this through. Even if we bought seven with us, we wouldn't be able to get off the ship. The four of us couldn't open door nine. It is hidden, but an exit bit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a nine. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, that's right. The digital route for us four would be eight, so we'd have to, have to add ace to make nine. Right. Unless we bring ace two, we'll be stuck. Lotus scratched the back of her ear. Oh. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. She didn't sound particularly bothered by what Junpei said, nor did she seem particularly surprised. Well, let's try and find another way, okay? A way to get out of here with all eight of us. That's impossible. Are you being serious? You do know that only five people at most can go through one of the numbered doors, right? The number nine isn't going to be an exception to that rule. Regardless, at least three people will get left behind. You're right. That is true. The moment he said it, Junpei felt a chill run down his spine. It was true. How Lotus could remain cavalier about so terrifying a prospect was beyond him. When they found the number 9, they would have to choose which three of them would die. Lotus's forehead furrowed. Do you think I could have a moment alone? There are some things I need to think about. Yeah, I'm not to be a bitch. But then again, if three of us are gonna die, then... Ooh, that was an emotional bombshell. <laughs> Junpei and June turned and began walking away from Lotus. Talk to them. Talk to her had left them feeling ill. Junpei's heart felt heavy and his steps sluggish. But he told himself pessimism would get them nowhere. So he forced himself to smile and turned to June. 